God is using me to do and the soul, the seeds that I'm sowing is just amazing. So even when I'm out, I try to make sure that I log in and I made sure that I logged on and it was some little difficulties, but we did get a quick word in and you guys check that out because we was talking about integrity and David and Bathsheba and it was just amazing. Um, last Saturday, I did post um the conference that I did. I did post them there on both pages, the, the personal and the inspirational. I'm trying to get everybody on to the inspirational because I'm about to get off that personal soon because now it's not even about me anymore. It's about branding. You know, it's about the ministry first and it's about my companies, you know, the brand and the t-shirts, the books. It's not really about me no more, but, um, I did post it. It was amazing. The conference was, um, it was mind blowing. It was a game changer. The souls that, that God just touched and talked to. I mean, people told me that they literally left out different. And that's what I pray for. I always pray that I'm not coming out to try to look good, try to make a name for myself, but I, I, I do it because I want people to be like me, you know, compelled to just want to live different, live on purpose. And, you know, we was talking about Broken Crown, Still Color, which was just so cute because my second book, that's part of the name. I have another book coming out talking about Broken Crown, Still Color, how I faithed it. And I was just teaching on how to color and how to be receptive to the remnant and the new people that's coming in. Because how many of you know that the church is not going to look the same no more. Like I was telling them, it's not this, the sisters with the big hats and the brothers with the fanciest suits. Everybody's trying to outdress, you know, each other. It is truly about souls now. God is calling up a different kind of people. They looking like me. They looking like you. They just want Jesus. They don't want no phoniness. It's not about judging, looking at, you know, the outer appearance. Because how many of you know God said that he, when he, when he called David, what did he tell Samuel? He said, you're looking at the outer appearance. But I look at the inward appearance. I look at the heart. And that's what the new generation is looking at for the body of the Christ. We we are, we are changed. We are not what people are used to. We are radical and we are just for God. Amen. So if you guys did this, um, a couple of people that take that, I tried to get all of it up there. Just make sure you see it. Um, I had on my purple shirt for those who haven't already listen here. And I want to say this. I never come on begging. I never come on and try to make y'all feel, you know, bad. Like y'all should give me, you know, someone hit me up today and was telling me that there was some teachers out there and they're telling them it's so $8 and $11 and this and that. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes God will tell somebody to do that. But the Bible, and I taught about that. It says, test all things, test the spirit, pray about it. But when you sow here, you're sowing on to good fruit. If I'm feeding you and, and, and you're changing, so I have a donation button on the website. Donate. I do this full time. I'm in ministry full time. The t-shirts, the shirt so into my ministry this is what i'm doing for the kingdom you know when you're sowing over here you're sowing on to good harvest amen so if you're sowing on here you will be blessed and even if you're sowing to those people who do not mean you no good and just trying to take your money god will bless you because your heart is right amen and he's going to deal with them uh, fake prophets and false prophets that we've been talking about for weeks god has been sitting me here and been teaching about it you guys need to be reading and need to be listening because when he has me come this is stuff that i pray about this is stuff that i seek about. I don't just come on and trying to give you a word that I feel that you should hear. It is coming from God. Amen. So if I'm, if I'm so, if I'm sowing into your spirit, sow into the ministry. Amen. The shirt, um, I slay to pray. I'm just loving these shirts. I had one, uh, the purple one Saturday. I sold out guys. When I tell you God just showed up and show out, not only was the word prophetic word, I mean, he used me. It was a beautiful thing to see Saturday. And I sold out on the shirts and the books. So, um, I do have a sale going on for, uh, Black Friday. We have a sale on the books. Um, you can go on to FallonBrownPublishing.com. Somebody do me a favor and type it down there because I'm going to do this and then I'm just going to get straight into the word because I know you guys missed me and I miss you. So again, so we have this uh this is the black those that see my um advertising i'm wearing a large they do fit to size true to size this is the purple I just love these shirts because it is just so cute. I slay to pray. I slay to pray to look good. I slay to pray to, to, to slay every demon and witch and warlock that is trying to come against me. I'm slaying every principality. There was a meaning behind this shirt. Amen. It's just not to look good, but we are praying to slay these demons out here. We are walking in authority. Amen. I have one. This is the um, off the shoulder. You know, guys, this one, this is my favorite, honey. You know, I'm just a diva. This is my favorite. We have the book. Which is actually this book, um, man, one girl took the time out today. It was her birthday, y'all. And she just wanted to just say how my book blessed her. And on her birthday, she shouted me out and said, you know, that this, 
this book is really blessing her. So again, just again, if you if you don't even want to, if you bought the merchandise already and you just want to sow into the ministry, when you go on my website, the first page, there's a donation button. If you just want to buy, you want to get you a t-shirt, honey, it is the holidays. Y'all want to look good. Go ahead and support the ministry. You are sowing to good soil. Amen. FallonBrownPublishing.com. Lisa or Cheryl, one of you guys put FallonBrownPublishing.com on there for me. Okay, so we're going to get straight into the word. We already did that because I'm going to tell you something. God going to make sure I eat, honey. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. But I wanted to talk about the process of the weight. Um, last week, hey, sugar mama, my mother on y'all. That's my mama. Um, Moselle Brown, that's my mama. So last week we talked about the weight. Um, and it was really good. It was really prophetic and, and it was profound. And the Holy Spirit prompted me to talk about the weight again. Just like when he did with the false prophet, some things he just don't want to let up on. He want to make sure you get it. Thank you. So, um, today we're going to be talking about the weight. But how the weight prepares, amen? Because I know that even for myself, that some of us are waiting on things. Some of us have um, got promises um, prophetically, even through prophets or just God telling us himself. And, you know, we just feel like, what's going on? You know, why hasn't it uh, um, came to pass yet? And some of you guys, you are like myself, we are in promise. We are in, um, we are in our season, you know, um, for purpose, but it just doesn't look how we expected it to look. You know, um, we're going to talk about how God said his ways and his thoughts are not like our thoughts and our ways. So how God manifests things and not how we probably would have packaged it or how we would have thought it would be, but it still will blow our mind. Amen. You cannot see it's black. That ain't nothing about, but the enemy. So you should just pray and ask, uh, uh, um, God, I just pray that you open up the screen, but I pray that she can heal it in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, you know, he's the prince of air. He don't want spirit and truth to, you know, he'll make sure these false prophets get through, honey. And they taking the money and they, and they doing witchcraft and sowing all types of disorder and un unpeaceful fruit into the spirit of your souls. And, and when there's spirit and truth, there's always going to be chaos. He always going to have static and all that, but we rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus. So today I, I just thought it was just profound because even like when I came on last week, I tell you guys, even if you don't receive it, I receive it. Cause I always pray before I come on and I say, God, just give me a word that is not even just for them, but it's something that I can eat off too. Amen. It's, it's something that I, I, I want to, that I want to receive. Amen. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So it is freezing, but that ain't nothing but the devil. I'm going to continue to go on as long as you guys can hear it. He can try to bind. I don't know about Shinde, I don't know See, I bind every force of the enemy. I bind every spirit, every spirit. I bind every warlock. I bind every force of the principality that's trying to come against this teaching. I bind it up in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind it up in the mighty name of Jesus that you're trying to stop the people from hearing the truth, but no matter what they will receive the truth, whether they hear it today from me or whether the Holy Spirit prevails and speaks to the people himself because we serve a God that meets us right where we be at. So even if they can't hear me today, this seed will be sowed in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not stop this word. We bind it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind it. 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 You cannot come against God's people. I am tired of the enemy. I am tired of him. I am tired of his schemes. I am tired of him coming against God people because he tries to come against God's people and I am the type of woman that when you come against me that I fight you in the spirit realm so you can't stop what's going on with me all you do is make me stronger in the mighty name of Jesus you get me fired up enemy if you knew like I knew you wouldn't even mess with a chick like me come on somebody you just make me go harder you don't stop me you don't have me cry and make me think like oh I shouldn't have came on I always come on a Tuesday I come on every day if that's what the Holy Spirit tell me to do you won't stop this word. You won't stop this Holy Ghost power. You can't stop it. Yeah, see every demon that's trying to come against this. Every witch and warlock that's trying to come against this teaching. You won't stop it. You won't stop it in the mighty name of Jesus. Because every person that you got coming on that's taking these people money and that's sowing these seeds of discord and that's sowing these seeds that don't mean nothing but that's um, edifying the darkness of the kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, you have come on with no problem. But you try to come against the Holy Spirit. You try to come against the spirit and truth and you can't stop Jesus. You can't stop him. You can't stop him in my clothing line. You can't stop it in my book line. You can't stop it in my ministry. You can't stop me. You can't kill me, you can't hurt me, cause you need authority 
you to do that. So even when you try to come against this video here, we'll just pray it through. And even if we don't get the word out, we do it with praise and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can't stop me. You can't. Woo. You can't stop me. Vira, come go get me some tissue, baby. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. Even if this don't come out and we don't speak what I prepared, I'll stay on here speaking in tongues. I'll stay on here praying for the souls. I will stay on here binding every spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. You can't stop me. You can't. You can't. You can't. What you did was you invited the Holy Spirit. You invited the presence. You invited the presence of the Holy One to just come and sit down and reign in this atmosphere. That's what you did. You made this broadcast different than the rest. While all of them are sowing these seeds that don't mean these people no good. We sowing the seeds of the kingdom. We're bringing the worship and praise back. Because holiness is still, is still righteousness. Praising and blessing the name of Jesus is still the right thing to do. Come on, somebody. You ain't doing nothing. I don't know. I don't know who he, he forget that even when I was in the world that I was a fighter. He forget that God called me up because he know I'm a radical being. He forgets. He forgets. He forgets. Come on. He's an ignorant devil. He's an ignorant devil. And we bind that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind that spirit of discord in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind that spirit of confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind that spirit of lack in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind that spirit of loneliness in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind that spirit of I don't feel like I feel worthy enough in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're calling on to confidence. We're calling on to righteousness. We're calling on because we got authority to do so. We got authority. We got authority and we got to remember that thing. We always feel so defeated when life comes against us. No, we got authority to change things even with our words. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I talked about that on Saturday. How when Jesus was led to the cross, the Bible said, come on, somebody. Where's that? Now, he done got me started up. He got the wrong sister here, baby. He got the wrong sister here, baby. It talked about how in Isaiah 53 Isaiah 53, verse 7. Let me get Isaiah 53, verse 7 on here. Come on. He might he might have. Yeah, he did something all right. He brought the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. And Isaiah 53, 7, it talks about when Jesus was going on to the cross, how he kept his mouth closed. You know why he kept his mouth closed? Because he knew that it was power in his mouth. That's why he tries to come against every broadcast and every person that speaks spirit and truth. Because when you speak things out and you declare it and you decree it, it has a thought. And Jesus knew to keep his mouth closed when he was going to the cross because if he made him, if he if he said something and called on the angels and told them to come, they would have had to obey and they would have had to come and we wouldn't have had salvation if he did so. Come on, somebody. We wouldn't have had salvation if he did so. So he knew that he had to be quiet because if he opened his mouth, he would have summoned the angels and they would have had to come. And they would have had to help him because that's the type of God we serve. Once you declare it, once you decree it, it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. 53, Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who is of his generation protested? It said he did not open his mouth. He did not open his mouth because he knew if he opened up his mouth, everybody had to listen to what he spoke. If he said, Father, take this from me. Father, stop them. I bind this up in the name of G. I bind this up in the name of you, God, because he was Jesus. I bind this up in you, God, what they're doing to me as they're leading me to this cross. God would have had to ascend the angels and they would have had to do it. That's why when he was fasting for 40 days, come on, somebody. And the devil said, go ahead and throw yourself off because God would have to send the angels to ascend to pick you up so your feet won't touch a stone. Come on, somebody. It's what you speak. We got power. You don't get there and you don't start getting to me. Oh, my God, the devil coming against me no you fight you fight even if they think you crazy huh come on even if they think you crazy come on come on sometimes the enemy just he just so he gets so uh, uh uh ruffled up because he knows that the power that you hold he knows that the authority see let me tell you something about demons and all that other stuff that's why when you read the bible and they said the disciples tried to cast it out and he said to him who are you we, we don't know you we don't know you. They know who's for God and who's not. They know. They know. 
They know. So the devil gets so try to outwit himself to get you to stop what you doing that he messes it up and he works everything out. He works it all out for the kingdom to edify the kingdom. So what he think he's doing, he's bringing forth power. He's bringing forth me to start declaring and decreeing some things in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I come on here, I pray and I say, just like I do in my conferences, I don't want nobody being different. I don't, when, I, when I do conferences, I say, I don't want no one leaving the same. And, and that's what the testimonies I get. People hit me up and they say, I feel different. I did not walk out of there the same. I do the same thing for the recordings. God, I don't want nobody. To, when I press finish on this button, for them to feel the same. I want them to be compelled to live different, to live for you in and out, inside out. So when you pray things like that, you right, yeah, he want the screen to be black. Yeah, well, every time I do an interview with these big radio stations that don't never have no problem with their radio. They never have no problem. But as soon as I come on, it's a problem. Why? Because the enemy do not want the spirit and truth out. He know I live a life that, that's worthy to be praised. I live it for God, amen? And he know that when I'm speaking something, I'm speaking truth. That it's going to compel you to think and it's going to compel you to change. That after you have an encounter with me, you can't be the same. You can't because that's how my ministry flow. That's what he called me up to do. And it's not cockiness. It's confidence. It's confident in who I serve and what he called me to do. I know he didn't call me to play with people. He didn't. That's why all hell comes loose and break loose in my life and all this stuff that the enemy tried to do and try to sow these seeds in this world because he knows. But they can't stay. They don't last. He can't harm me because he does not have authority to do so. What he said? He said, touch, do whatever you want to Job, but touch not Job. Come on, somebody. When you know you living right and you know who you serving, he can't. He can't. Me and my mother was talking about that before, about certain things I go through. She said, you know, girl, sometimes you get to crying and, you know, and she said, I'll be hurting for you because you're my child. But I know who God called you to be, Fallon. And I know he got you. And he got those pretty babies that's over there serving him too. And that's for you to take. He got you. He got you. But you got to be in obedience. Holiness is still righteousness. You know you got that no good brother or that no good sister in your bed. Get him out. It ain't worth your soul. You know you scheming and conniving at the job. Repent for your wicked ways and change. You drinking, you gossiping. Repent for your wicked ways and change. Amen. So you can really have and receive miracles. I, I live off of miracles. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So last Tuesday when I came on, we talked briefly um, about David and Bathsheba and about integrity. You know, um, not doing things because you know you can. Because why? We know we walk in power. We know that the life and death is in this tongue. We know that it's healing in our hands. It's so much in us. But we have to tap into who we are. Amen. Come on, somebody. So now I, wanna, I, I just want to talk briefly about what we did. But you know, he just shifted the atmosphere. The Holy Spirit just came in real quick and had his way. Amen. And now all of something, because y'all know I'm lying. The context is acting up and drying, but that'll be okay too. First Samuel chapter 16. We're going to read verses 11 through 13. And it reads, so he asked Jesse, are these all of your sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep, Samuel said. Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and he had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and a handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Rama. So as they were, this is give a little back chapter to the story. This is when David got anointed that he was going to be the king. And David had about seven, seven other brothers. So when, when Samuel came, even Samuel, he was looking at all these other brothers who was tall, who looked at mighty and all this and that. And, and God kept saying, oh, no, 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 not him. And he actually anointed the youngest one, though he was handsome. You know, um, this is the NIV version, but the other study Bible says that he was, he was ruddy looking. He was red from working out in the field. He was dedicated to the field, but he was a a little young thing and it counted him out 
They counting him out. How many is counting you out? How many people say, oh, Fallon ain't nobody. She was just a big enough girl from the hood. Or, you know, Shovel ain't nobody. You know, Alicia ain't nobody. Tracy ain't nobody. They try to count you out. Alicia ain't nobody. They try to count you out for who they think you are to be. And God said, yes, they are somebody. Come on, somebody. Yes, they are somebody. They are who I anointed for the journey. They are who I called. And though you counted them out. And though you said that they not the one, I called them. Come on, somebody. I called them. No, it's not those brothers that you think they are, Samuel. It's this one right here. I got my eye on this one. I got my eye on this one. The one that you counted out. And I told them Saturday, I said, we serve a proactive God. I want to give this to y'all because you know what? I, I, I gave it to them, but I want to give it to y'all. We serve a proactive God. See, why? While, while Saul was out there carrying on and thinking he was this and thinking he was all that, our God had already had conquered them. See, that what he was going to do. And he said, you think you that God saw, but it ain't you, baby. I already called somebody. I got my eye on. I already got some ways and things prepared for him. And as he's out there and he's out there tending sheep and he's out there lying, killing lions and bears, I'm preparing him for the journey. While everybody's counting you out, while you in your wilderness, oh, oh come on somebody, while you in your wilderness, while you lonely and you going through what you going through and everybody's counting you out, you serve a God that's preparing you for your journey. Come on somebody, you serve a God that is preparing you for your journey. He's preparing you. Stop being frustrated about the things that you going through and know that God got you he's preparing you we serve a proactive God nothing goes unseen come on you know he was out there probably cleaning up after those sheep and singing his songs you know he liked to sing and he liked to write his songs and he probably felt counted out that all his brothers was uh uh thinking they was this and thinking they was that but they didn't even have the heart he had they couldn't even understand the things that he went through how many of you are going through some things and that the average person couldn't even withstand they would lose their mind if they went through what you're going through come on somebody they will lose their mind if they even touch the things that you've been through but it's preparation baby and it's preparation, baby. And it's preparation. He's getting you together for what he called for you. Come on, somebody. It is all. All of it works out. 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 It is all for the purpose of the kingdom. But you got to stay focused. You got to know who you serve. You got to stay focused. Proactive. It says, a person policy or action controlling a situation by causing a situation to happen rather than responding after it happens. Come, oh, I got to read that again. Proactive, a person policy or action controlling a situation by causing a situation to happen. So it said that the God that we serve, he causes a situation to happen rather than responding after it happens. Oh, come on, somebody. It said he don't respond after. After it happens. He said he caused it to happen. We serve a God that causes things to happen. And he don't respond after it happens. He responds before it happens. Everything that David needs was already waiting for him. He just had to walk into that thing. Come on, somebody. He just had to walk into that thing. That's the type of God we serve. That's the type of God we serve. So why they counting you out? And they saying this. And every witch and warlock and principality is against you. Stop getting in that corner and start realizing who you are and who you belong to. And you fight in the spiritual. You declare and you decree things. You get into your scriptures. You fast, but you know that you, you know that you got a God that already has made a way. It's not a cliche. It is not a cliche. And then when you get to the destination, it will all make sense of the things that you went through. Come on, somebody. It will all make sense. It will all make sense of the things that you went through. Because when it was time for David to go in battle and they laughed at him and said, little boy, they said, little boy, you can't, you can't beat Goliath. Do you see how tall he is? You can't take him down. And David said, but homie, I, when I was out there tending the sheep, I killed the lion. I don't know she, I don't know she. I killed the lion and a bear, baby. This, this, this demon, this demon that you're afraid of, he is nothing to me. He is nothing to me. Cause I done killed the lion and a bear and he shall fall too. He shall fall too. All of the stuff that you went through and prepared you for the battle at hand that is promoting you to your destination. It's promoting you to your promise. 
It's promoting you. It's promoting you. When I lost my husband and my husband died and I buried my baby sister. Don't you know that before God called my baby sister home? I never forget this. Child, I'm looking wild. I'm looking crazy. It is okay because I'm on fire. He messed up. <laughs> he messed up. He brought the Holy Spirit, baby. And I had, before it happened to my sister, I was going to a revival at the church, New Greater Bethel. And at the time, Pastor Boyd, mother died. And even though his mother died, he still was carrying on the services and doing the tent, the revival. And I remember I kept saying to my sister, I mean to my daughter, I said, baby, I, I can't believe that he's doing the revival. And his mother passed away. I said, he's so strong. And, you know, it just blew my mind. I was fascinated by it. Oh, behold, four days, huh? Yes, God. Four days into the revival, I'm sitting in a tent. And God called my baby sister home. And then he said, as I was with my mother and helping her do the arrangements, he put me in a trance at my other sister's house. And he said, I need you to bring forth the word about love. And, and I want you to read out of Corinthians and all this stuff he told me to do step by step. You see, there was a process there. Everything you go through, everything that has God hands on it, it's a puzzle. And he will give you the pieces to the puzzle. And it would unfold as I was sitting in that revival. And I was being blown away and captivated how that pastor was still able to do the revival. And later that week, he had to do the funeral for his mother didn't know that I was being in preparation to do to bring forth one of the most profound words in my ministry revolving around my sister's death do you understand what I'm saying to you there's always a method to the madness there's always the reason there's always the reason stop counting your God out and trust him he knows what he's doing even in your painful times even in your painful times even when you're down and out and the whole world is against you even when they're jealous and they're talking about you even when the money don't add up, even when sickness comes, even when your kids is against you, even when your man is against you, even when you just confused in your mind, he finds a way and he works it out. He works it out. He works it out. He works it out. That's why I was fascinated. See, I'm killing my lions and my bears. So now as I'm walking into purpose and I'm being intentional, it all makes sense. And can't nobody come against what God called me to do. Because as he has me in the way, he's preparing me. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? He's preparing you. He's preparing you. He's preparing you. But the more that you fight him, the more that you're not in alignment, the more that you're not in obedience, you're going to continue to go around that same mountain. That's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. You got to be ready. You know that saying, I don't, I don't get ready, I be ready. That's what we got to be doing in the body of Christ. We got to stay up in these Bibles. I got about three or four of them around me. I stay protected. My arm is up. I'm not trying to get into the latest gossip. I'm not trying to know who's schooling who and who's doing what and what this person said. I'm over here feeding my spirit. I'm feeding my spirit. So when every witch and warlock come against me, when every demon come against me, I fight them with the word and I stand grounded. That's why when I come on, all hell breaks loose and every devil tries to come against me, come out my mouth because he know it's fire. Come on, somebody. He know it's fire. He know it's fire. And that's how you got to be. You got to be confident in your walk. You ain't come to play. This world is waiting to devour you. It is people on assignment to devour you. Do you understand what I'm telling you? And they in the church. And they in the church. And they in the workplace. Amen. And they coming in your homes trying to devour you. And if you're not staying in your scriptures. And if you're not staying prayed up. It will devour you. You got to stay in your word. You got to trust your God. You got to. You got to. You got to. David said, I don't care about this giant, y'all. Y'all cowards. Y'all care. Y'all care. You know the world say, oh, that girl crazy. She done left her job. She doing this. She doing that. But do you know how many inboxes, when I go to these conferences, how many people come to me and they say, I'm glad you left your job. It is not in vain. I'm glad you say yes to Jesus because you helping me say yes to Jesus. They going to think you crazy. They going to count you out. 
It's a lonely walk when you say yes to Jesus and you walk for real. It's going to be some family affairs and ties that you can't go to because then it's going to be against your spirit. But you got to know who you serve. It's going to hurt you because it's going to be some friends that you've been down with for years, but they just can't come with you in this, in this next season because they're not prepared and they can't handle for what God is about to do to you and do through you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? While you in the way, you're being prepared. You being prepared. You're being prepared. You're being prepared. And you gotta trust him. You gotta trust him. You gotta stop. I, I, you know, I just feel this in my spirit. You gotta stop playing the victim. Why me? I was doing it. I will secretly go in my bathroom. I will lock the door and I will be crying, Jesus, why? I don't understand. You called me to do this and you told me to do that. But it looked like this and it looked like that. And he said, baby, just hold on. Because in due time, you will get your reward. But you hold on and you press through and you declare and you decree. And you spite in the village you am. Because I gave you authority, baby. I gave you authority. I gave you authority. Know who I am. That's what God wants some of y'all. He wants some of y'all to know who he is. And you got to know that you can't be living the way you want to live and expect manifestation. I'm going to keep it real with you. You have some preachers there sit there and tell you that it's okay that you live in this way and you live in that way. But you still going to receive your blessing in this and the third day lying. They lying. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You got to be obedient to this thing. There are precepts. There are guidelines that you got to adhere to. You got to because it keeps you in a covenant. That's why he said, touch not my son, Joe. You can have everything around him, but you can't touch my son, Joe, because he had a covenant. That's why when you read and you see that the spirit, where's that? Where's that? Right here. That the spirit came on, the spirit came on, uh, uh, it came on, put on, on Saul. First Samuel 16, uh, verses 14 through 18. Come on, somebody. The spirit came on, uh, uh, the evil spirit came on him. Where is it at? <coughs> Right here, verse 14, I'm reading from the NIV study Bible. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. See, when you're not in, when you're not in a relationship with God no more, and I want to break that down for you newcomers that'll be like, wait, what? The, he, he will put a spirit on you? Listen here. Everything is subjected to God. Even God created the devil, y'all. He created the devil. Remember, he was an angel that wanted to do his own thing. Everything is under subjection to God. Evil spirits, everything. That that's why when the Bible says cast it out, it has to listen. It has to be casted out because you are in alignment and you have the Holy Spirit residing in you and you have a covenant with our Father, with our Abba. So when you say something, it is obligated to be into subjection. That's why when I say I bind it up in the mighty name of Jesus, that the black screen won't come on no more. It had to be in subjection to what I spoke because I spoke it with a fire and I spoke it with authority and I met what I spoke. Amen. That's why they say, that's what they mean when they say faith with works is not dead. People think it's all the time, oh, I got to be a busy body. I got to move. I got to move. Sometimes it's just being still too. It's working. But you, the faith and works is that you got to believe that thing. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. See, when Saul thought he was this and that, he broke his covenant. And that's why the evil spirit was able to reside on him. You understand what I'm saying? When God brought the evil spirit about and it was able to torment him, it's because he was not under the covenant no more. Remember, before the spirit came, what did I read to you? It said, now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul. It departed from him. That's why it's so important that you be in obedience. So, um, God told Saul to destroy that whole town. And he said, I'm going to destroy him but I'm going to destroy him my way and God said no brother you want to do what I said it's my show he said that's not what I told you to do so since you want to be one of these kings that you want to be airing it and you want to do things your way I'm going to show you how I roll now your covenant is broken with me see the spirit of the Lord left then the spirit of tormentation came the evil spirit came when did the evil spirit come y'all when the spirit of the Lord left see they both can't reside together 
That's why when we talked about Moses and how uh, uh, the devil was fighting over Moses' body and God called, come on somebody, I remember that teaching, and God called for the archangel Michael to come and they were fighting. That's why I always tell you, you think you're just fighting here. There's a fight going on in the spiritual and the heavenly realms over you too. This It's a, it's a real spiritual warfare about you. It really is. It's that serious. The devil don't want to go by yourself, y'all. Remember, hell was made for the devil. It was not made for you and I. That was not God's intention. So now the devil said, I ain't going by myself. I'm going to take a whole bunch of dummies with me that allow themselves to be uh, flooded by lust and, and, and lustful desires and, and they stray against the word. I'm going to take them right with me. So the spirit left and then he was tormented and we serve a proactive God that was all in the works for who? For David. That was all in the works for David. See, you got to understand, before God gives you a position, he got to make sure you're ready for the position. David couldn't just go run and be king. He had to know how the thing flow. He had to know how it flows in the, in the palace. So now with the God, the, the God had David be the one come and play the heart for him. Because when his soul was tormented, the, his advisors told him, you need, you need the spirit. You need somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit that can minister to your soul. You understand what I'm saying? And as he was there ministering to the soul, he was there learning. That's why you always have to be in subjection to be a, 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 a student. I don't care how long you knew the word. I don't care if you know the Bible front and back. You got to be a student to the day you got or God can't use you. You're going to stay like this. Anybody that think they know it all in the body of Christ is like this. They're not going from glory to glory to glory. They're like this. You got to be a student. You got to serve. Jesus came and left the kingdom to what? Serve. He was washing feet. And that's the prince. He was washing feet. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So David knew that he, he not only was he a mighty man, he knew how to play. Amen. So when he was there, he was watching how the advisors speak to the king and how to do this and how the maids had to flow. God was showing him. He was preparing him while the wait, because remember, he was already anointed. Samuel already came and anointed him. So he was already anointed. But his situation at the time didn't seem like he was the chosen one that he was anointed. This is for somebody and this is for me and I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. It may don't seem like you're in purpose, that you're being intentional, but you are. He was already anointed. The power already resided in him. But he had to teach him some things. He had to be prepared for the situation, for the promise. Some of you are, are trying to rush the process and you're not fully prepared. You're not. You're not. Because if you was, you would have it already. And that's for me. I take that. I take that. I would have it already. He knows what he's doing. He knows who you have to touch on the way. And remember, we serve a proactive God. So everything, everything is being thought out. See, why I go to where he needs me to be, there's some Tracys that got to be touched. Come on. There's some Janus that got to be touched. There's some Lisas that got to be touched. Come on, somebody. There's some Alicias that got to be touched. You understand what I'm saying? There's some people on the way to where I'm going that has to have an a, a encounter with me. He knows what he's doing. When he was on his way, he stopped at the well because he knew that young lady was coming to the well. He knew that she needed a word. He knew, he knew that she needed to be prophesied. He said, yeah, baby, I got, I'll give you something that you would never thirst again. But you got many husbands, even the one you're with ain't yours. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The spirit, the, and I tell people all the time, the word is offensive. The word, the, the Bible says the word is like a sword on, and, and sharp on both sides, cut right through you. Yeah, you're going to feel a certain way because it's convicting you. Because he's revealing the things that you have hidden. He's revealing the secrets of your heart. So when you're listening to somebody that's speaking for spirit and truth, yeah, it's some things you like, how they knew that? How they know I'm going through that? How they knew I needed a word right there? Because that's the prophecy. Remember, we talked about that. God knows what you need. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a part two to this because it's so much that we didn't cover. There's so much that we didn't cover, but we serve a God in order, and I'm always on for the hour, and I don't want to go past that hour because I want to make sure that everything that the Holy Spirit used and, and did through me for, for us today, I want you guys to let that resonate in your spirit because we got to think that, and that's another thing. You got to be careful. Y'all on here, every, every person that's live, every person that's coming on, y'all coming on, and y'all and, and got to be careful. Y'all not praying before y'all seeing stuff, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, 
off for stuff that God don't want for you. That ain't, that ain't even the person that he sent. You got to be praying and saying, God, is this something that you want me to, to put into my spirit? Because the word comes by hearing. Amen. So you got to be careful what you're hearing. And I want this thing to, I want it to manifest in your life. I want you to understand that what you're going through is preparation. It's preparation. God knows what he's doing. Nobody understood when I left the job. Nobody understood. But when you look at me now and you look at the fire that he brings through me, it was a reason. And best to believe there's provision there. I told you about the time I had no food. And a young lady, Lisa, I never wanted to tell her name because she, she like, she low profile. She don't like people in her business, but I want to give her her berries. Lisa came and said, I want to bless you. And, and, and came and she tried to do the donation button. It didn't work. So she said, I want to bring it to your house. And then she came and she came with a whole bunch of fool she didn't know i needed that at the time do you understand what i'm saying to you there's provision there you serve a proactive god do you think that i come on here and i take the time and tell you the stuff that i go through and testimony after testimony just to be talking so you could be like wow no i want you to know that you serve a god that sees you and meets you and hears every cry and he got provision for you that he got your back in the midst of the storm he making the storm there's a way Remember when they got in that boat, Jesus said, we going to the other side. And before you know it, a storm came while he was sleeping. <laughs> he said, oh, you a little faith. He spoke that we going to the other side. So that mean they was going to go to the other side. But the storm came. He knew the storm was coming. And he still fell asleep. And what he did, he woke up and he spoke to the storm. That's why you got to know when to speak. And you got to know like Jesus when he was going to the cross, when to shut up. You got to know when you're going through some things that you got to be careful what you're speaking because you might just be prolonging your situation. You can't keep saying, I'm broke, I'm broke, no, I'm broke. No, I be in here. I know Fallon Brown Publishing is a multimedia and a multi-million dollar corporation company. I know that my book is changing lives. I know that my ministry is changing lives. No devil in hell can stop my purpose. I speak that thing out. I speak that thing out. I speak that thing out. No weapon form against me shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. I walk in this thing out and I ain't afraid to walk this thing out. I ain't afraid to do what God tell me to do. He said, leave food stands and I've left them and I ate. I've been eating every since. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? God knows. He knows. He knows. But you got to walk this thing out for real. How long is you going to continue to do it your way? How long are you going to continue to do it your way? How long are you going to continue to do it your way? Your way is bringing no peace. I've been through hell and back. 2017 had some highs for me and it had some lows. But through it all, even my mama, she got peace. And she misses her baby. And she's hurting like crazy. But she's still able to focus and maintain. Because she serves a God that she trusts. And she's watching so many souls come to Jesus because of her baby. He will work it out. He will work it out. This is the day that you would never be the same. This is the day that you would stop going around that same mountain. This is the day that you would stop doing the same old tired things, producing the same old tired results. It's like the workout. You don't go and work out, you're going to get fatter. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is the breakthrough hour. Nobody will be the same. Anybody who is under my voice right now, you will not be the same. You will not be the same. You are giving your life to Jesus and wholeheartedly. Some of you right now are just crying your hearts out and that's the Holy Spirit. It's okay. It's okay. He said, cast all your anxieties and give it to him. This is the hour that you will never be the same. This is the hour that we will all come up and we will all have received a breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare it and I decree it, but we got to be obedient. We got to walk with him for real. This is the hour that we letting some things go and we're not returning. We're not picking them back up. I'm, I'm seeing generational curses being broken. I'm seeing affliction being healed. I'm seeing uh, uh, um, um, some of you guys are, are addiction. Some of you guys are addicted to certain things. I see addiction being healed. I see addiction for pornography being healed. I see addiction from cigarettes being healed. I see addiction from marijuana being healed. Addiction from drinking. I see the spirit of gossip being removed. I see the spirit of obedience coming. The spirit of obedience. And listen here, this is for somebody. You're gonna be lonely. You're gonna be lonely, baby. It's a lonely walk. 
I'm losing friends daily. I'm losing people that I put in my book and I, and I, and I dedicated the book to them <laughs> and I'm losing them too. But it's okay because everybody can handle what God is doing in your life. And you got to know that if God is removing them, trust him. He's removing them for a reason bro, because you got to hear this and hear this clear. He knows the heart of the souls. He knows what you don't know. See, people have mastered the art of sounding good and smiling while they saying what they saying. But secretly they can't stand you. Secretly they praying that you was that oh. He knows. He knows. He knows. And you got to trust him. This is the hour that you got to stop going to some places that you've been going to. You got to say, I'm sorry, I can't go. Who cares what they say about you? I can imagine the things people say about me. Who cares? Long as I know that I'm walking in peace and I'm walking in love. I'm walking into those two things. It doesn't matter. Because everything I do, I do in love. And if I'm doing something, I'm protecting my spirit. Because I'm learning to master the art of protecting my spirit. You must protect your anointing. You must pray for discernment. You must listen when he speaks. Stop being on social media all the time. Stop being in your phone all the time. Stop being on TV all the time. Shut everything down. And so you can hear from him because we talked about it, how when he speaks, he speaks in a quiet, still, small voice so you can hear him when he tells you the next steps. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is a new hour. This is a new season coming up. And those that are wary, that's been doing good, you've been honest. You've been obedient, you've been fasting, you've been praying, you've been in your scriptures, you've been preaching and ministering to people. Thus say the Lord, your reward is coming. It is here, but you got to open up your eyes and you got to realize that it is not packaged in a way that you thought. Stop focusing on the negativity. Stop focusing on who is against you and focus who is with you and focus what God is doing in your life now. Remember, anything that needs to be done, we can't do it. He has to do it. So that's why it seems like there's lack. That's why it seems like there's scarcity, but he doesn't want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to live like there's lack. He wants us to live like there's abundance. He wants us to trust in him so he can have the miracles manifest. This is the same God that we read about. It's he's the same God today. He works out miracles. He does, but you got to believe that thing. You got to believe that thing and you got to trust him. Tuesday, we would come on. We would finish out this, this, this power because there's so much that we didn't cover, but I pray that it blessed you. I pray that you really take in Everything that you have heard, I pray that you receive the prayer that we prayed in Jesus' name. I pray that you learn to walk in authority. I pray that you know that you are not a victim anymore. You're not a victim. You're not a victim. Those days is over. Those days is over. And stop sowing to people who you thinking because they say, uh, uh, sow $11, sow $7, and this and that third, and they got you, and you thinking because you sowing that you're going to receive something. Let me tell you something. That's why I don't go hard on y'all sowing for me because what is for you, it is for you. If God wants something to manifest in your life, hear me out. It is going to manifest. He will place in your spirit if he wants you to bless somebody. See that day, he placed in Lisa's spirit what he wanted her to do. And my button, it was nothing wrong with the donation button. But he caused that to happen so she can come here and do what he placed in her heart. And that was to get the food and all the other stuff she did. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Start praying for discernment. Don't let this devil outwit you with his crazy schemes that he's been doing over and over again. Some of you are falling for the same crazy things that you know better. You know better. The Bible, we talked about this. The Bible says to test all things. Some of you need to go back to that teachings that I taught about, about the false prophets and the false apostles. Go back to that thing until you really have it in your spirit. Sometimes I, I, I focus on the same passage. I will focus on it for days if I got to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I can really let it meditate in my spirit. Y'all make sure y'all share this thing. God bless y'all and I'll see y'all Tuesday.